one. Uh, we're going to talk about parametric equations. Now imagine that you have a car, okay, and we have a coordinate plane, okay, the xy plane. So the car is traveling this way. Now looking at the curve that this car travels, the y is not a function of x. Why? Why? It doesn't why? pass the it. It doesn't pass the vertical line test. Yeah, it doesn't pass the vertical line test. So if I draw a vertical line here or here, it's going to intersect the graph more than once. So y is not a function of x. Okay. However, we so we kind of y y equal to a function of x. We couldn't do that. So what we do over here, we look at the coordinate x and y coordinate of this point. x coordinate is a function of time t. At any given time, you can find the x coordinate of the car, okay? And the y, similarly, y is a function of the time t. So we can express x as a function of t and y as a function of t. Say x is f t, y is g of t then we can find the location of the car at any given time. Now this pair of equation is called a pair of parametric equations. Uh, let me give you a translation for Chinese. It's called Chan Su function, okay? So what does it mean here? It means you're introducing a third variable, okay? Uh, in this case, it's a T and you express the x and y in terms of the third variable, t, okay? Those are the equation in terms of a third variable, okay? Now, this curve over here that traced out by this pair of parametric equation is called a parametric curve, okay? Uh, distinguished from a regular curve, regular, regular curve is just a connection of points, but, Parametric curve, it actually has direction. So as the t here increase, as the time increase, the curve is gonna chase out this way, okay? Now, parametric curves has direction, okay? So you should indicate the direction of the curve by putting arrow on the curve, okay? Now, let's look at another example. Uh, one common over here is, uh, a lot of time, parametric equation, they choose the time t as a third variable. Uh, in other situation, the third variable is not necessary t and not necessary the time, but uh, we do have a parametric equations often in terms of the third variable time t, okay? Okay, now let's look at this example. Okay, we have a pair of parametric equation t here. Now we're gonna sketch and identify the curve. So we make a table over here, we choose different t, and then we can substitute different t into this equation to get different x and different corresponding y. So I did the work over here. Notice that you can use a graphing calculator to make a table. You can put different t here and they will generate different x and y for you. You can make this table using graphing calculator. Now, once you get this, then we can plug in the corresponding point, okay? So eight comma negative one is when t equal negative one, uh, three comma zero is when t equal negative, oh, eight comma negative one is when t equal negative two, three comma zero is when t equal negative one, and then we're gonna draw the curve, okay? So the curve is going to go this way. T equal negative one here, negative, T equal negative, uh, T equal negative one here, T equal, neg T equal zero here, T equal one, T equal two, T equal three, T equal four. So the curve, the parametric curve move this way. Uh, over here, we didn't, put any restriction on the t. So we assume the t here is for all, all real numbers, okay? So the direction will be going this way. Now, I'm gonna ask you, looking at this graph over here, uh, can you identify what kind of curve is this? 
What kind of curve it looks like to you? Parabola? It's a parabola. Yeah, it looks like a parabola, right? Um, now let's confirm our guess over here by eliminating this variable t. How can, and, and then just like cut out this, this third variable t and try to relate y with x together. So I want to eliminate this variable t and try to express y in terms of x directly. So how do we do that? Now from this equation, you can pick one other equation to solve for t. From this equation over here, what does t equal to? y minus one. y minus one. And we are going to substitute this, t equal to y minus one into this t here in the, the, the other equation, okay? So let's do that. That way we can eliminate the t. So now if we eliminate the t, what happened over here is we get x equal to this t squared minus 2t. So t is equal to y minus 1. Okay, y minus 1. And you do the algebra over here. See, expand this using a perfect square here and combine nine terms we got x equal to y squared. Oh, that is, a, oh, I forgot, a, I forgot a y here. There's a y over here, okay? So we got x squared equal to y squared minus 4y plus three. And that is indeed a parabola. When you have either um, x, you have x here expressed as a, second degree polynomial in terms of y, that is a par parabola. This parabola here open to the right because the coefficient for y squared here is positive, okay? So that confirms, okay. yes? Is that, is that like um, guess confirmed by the fact that the highest, the highest degree function of t is two? So then it oh. would, it, it seems to point out that it might be a parabola. That it, is a because, good observation, very good. So uh, we'll just said that because y here is uh, t to the first power and then x here is t to the second power, right? The second degree polynomial in terms of t and that suggests that it's a parabola. Yes, I think that that makes sense. And it, it's a very reasonable guess and it, it makes sense because that way x will be uh, in terms of y and to the second degree. Yes, you got it, okay? Good observation and good input, okay, thank you. Okay, so you can tell from this why the way is a parabola. If one of them, y here is to t to the first power, x here it has t to the second power, you can tell it's a parabola y the way, okay? Okay, good job, okay. Now over here, uh, we can restrict we can restrict the t. So instead of t being all real number, we can restrict the t go from zero to four, okay? That way uh, we will get only part of the parabola. So t equal to zero here, t equal to four here. So it will be the para uh, this part of parabola starting from here and end it over here. So here is how the graph will be. Okay, now this one here, t greater equal to zero, t equal to zero, the corresponding point here is called the initial point of this parametric curve. And when t equal to four, that will give us the terminal point of this par parametric curve. If we reject t, if we reject t, go from zero to four, okay? Initial point, terminal point, okay? Now let's look at this example over here. We have a pair of parametric equations. This time we're going to restrict the t go from zero to two pi. Now take a guess over here. Uh, what kind? Well, we could make a table, right? We could make a table for different t, and then uh, we can pick we can pick t equal to zero, substitute to get x and y t equal to pi over two, substitute and get x and y, et cetera. We can make a table. 
However, we can also do eliminating the derivable t over here to get an equation that directly relate the y with the x over here, okay? So you look at this, this is sine t, that's cosine and t. That is a, a truth identity that relates sine and cosine. Uh, what is that truth identity that comes into your mind? A sine squared t plus sine squared t equals to one. Yes, very good, okay? So you recognize that cosine squared plus sine squared equal to one when these two angles are the same. So cosine t here is x, sine t here is y. So we got x squared plus y squared equal to one, which is the unit circle. What's the center of this? What's the center of this unit circle? The, the, center, the, come on, the, the origin, right? Okay, very good. So we could actually, so now notice that I will point out to you, okay? You can actually graph parametric curve on decimal, okay? You can put this x equal cosine t as the first coordinate, okay? Y equal to sine t, this as the second coordinate, and decimal, we're gonna graph the parametric curve for you, okay? Indeed, it is a circle, okay? So, but we don't need that. We also, we also got this over here. It's easy to see. It's a unit circle, okay? So now we want to see when this uh, parametric curve start. What's the initial point? So we substitute t equal to zero there. What's cosine of zero? Everyone? One. Cosine zero one. Okay. And what is sine of zero? Zero. Zero. Okay. So if you make a table, okay. So you will get when t equal to zero, so you get x equal to one, y equal to zero, right? Okay. And when t equal to power two, cosine of power two will be zero, sine of power two will be one. Okay, so you see that the initial point over here is going to be one comma zero. So one comma zero, that's the initial point. When t equal to power two, you get to here. T equal to pi, it come here. And pi, three pi over two, T equal to three pi over two, we get to here. When T equal to two pi, we return back to this point. So this point here is the initial point, but it's also the terminal point. So when T go from zero to two pi, we finish one run unit circle, okay? And the direction that, that the point move, the direction of this parametric curve, it is counterclockwise. So go this way, counterclockwise. Okay. So that is the parametric curve. So when you try to describe this parametric curve, you have to give the initial point. You also want to give the direction. So you say this. As the t increase from zero to two pi, the point x comma y is going to move around. Okay, it's going to move how many times around this unit circle? Only once. Okay, so once around this unit circle, and in what direction? Counter clock right direction. You can put CCW, stand for counter clock rise, okay? Direction. And starting from this point, okay, one comma zero right here. Okay, so since that would move only once, so you're going to end up at the same point, one comma zero. So that's how you describe this parametric curve, okay? All right, so distinguished from the regular curve, regular curve doesn't have direction. Parametric curve, you, you need to indicate the direction. 
And you also want to indicate what does it start, when does it end, okay? Now let's look at another example. Question over here. Okay, let's look at another example here, okay? This second example over here, this one over here, uh, also involves sine and cosine, okay? What's the period for sine and cosine? What's the sine and cosine of 2t? What's the period? Is it pi? It's pi, very good. It's two pi divided by the coefficient of the t here. So that is two pi divided by two. So that's pi. So we know that uh, this curve is going to finish one round uh, in pi, okay? So again, because in involves sine and cosine, so we want to use this trig identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equal to one. So we have x squared plus y squared equal to one. Again, it's the same unit circle, okay? However, it's a different parametric curve, okay? Why is that? So I draw it over here, okay? So I actually draw it and I go from zero to pi over two. You see that that corresponds to this half circle over here from zero to pi over two. And actually, if you substitute t equal to zero, what's, when t equal to zero, sine of zero, what's sine of zero will be zero. zero. Cosine of zero will be one. So what's the initial point? The initial point will be this one over here. Zero one? Yeah, it's going to, Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, it's going to be sine of zero, 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 one, right? So comma one is the initial point. Okay, so we're going to start from here. Okay, and um, when t equal to power two, it's going to move, okay, to here. Okay, so it's going to move this way. Okay. And now you see that when t actually go from pi over two to pi, it's gonna trace out this green half circle, okay? So it go from here to here, okay? So this one over here is when t equal to pi over two. This is when t equal to zero, okay? And then when t equal to pi again, so when t equal to pi, when t equal to pi, you're gonna end up at the same point. So we're going to finish one round of this unit circle. It's gonna be, the unit circle is going to be traced out once. Starting from here, it's gonna move in the clockwise direction and trace out once. When t go from zero to pi. Now I'm going to draw the parametric curve from pi to two pi, okay? From pi over here to two pi. What happened over here is going to trace out another, um, another times of this unit circle, another round, okay? So you see that if you have t go from zero to two pi, this unit circle is going to be traced out two times in the clockwise direction, okay? So to describe this parametric curve, we go this way. So as t increase from zero to two pi, this point x comma y is gonna start from this point zero comma one and move clockwise around this unit circle twice. Okay, not just one time, twice. Now, if you're looking at the curve, okay, so, so one time here and then another time here, okay? Now, looking at this to compare with this example with the example we did before, okay, the one there above, this one and this one, they have the same curve. Both are the unit circle. However, they are two different parametric curves. This parametric curve is, is going to start from here and move uh, counterclockwise once. This parametric curve is going to start from this 
and move clockwise here twice. Okay, so two different pair magic curves. Okay, so it's important to distinguish them. Okay, okay. Now remember, um, actually, parametric equations are very useful in describing the trajectory, uh, the orbit of planet. So, like, because you think think about the moon, right? They go around this uh, our Earth, okay, and the orbit is a uh, is an ellipse, and we can use parametric equation to actually represent that, okay? Okay. Now uh, let's look at the this. Let's try to find this parametric. Now, not the two example we did. We are given parametric equation, and we're trying to graph the parametric curve. Now let's go backward. This time, we're going to give you the curve. Okay, and we're going to give you a curve which is the circle. Okay. And then we're going to ask you to find the pair of parametric equation for the curve. So how do we do that? Now, a circle with center h comma k with radius r, the equation, this is the standard equation for a circle with this center and this radius, okay? Now to find the pair of parametric equation, let's look at the most simple case when the center is at the origin. When the center at the origin and the radius is R, what is the, can you think, uh, let's use the third variable. Let's use this center angle here, data, as the third variable. So let's represent this X coordinate in terms of data. What does x, how does this x here relate to this radius r and this center angle data? Anyone? Is it sine? Uh, r equal to, r is, okay. So oh no, r y, is, it would be y. Oh, y, y is r. r sine, yeah. Y over here is opposite to this angle. So y is r times sine data, right? You got it. And then x here is what? R times cosine data. You got it. Okay, good job. So x is R times cosine data because x over R is cosine data, y over R is sine data. So y is R sine data, x is R cosine data. You got it. Good job. Now, once you get this pair of parametric equation, uh, equation for a circle centered at the origin, and now we're going to move the center to h comma k. So we're going to trans translate this. So now the x coordinate instead of zero, it change to h. Y coordinate instead of zero, it change to k. Then what do we do? What does x equal to? Anyone? Anyone? To move the x coordinate to the to the left, would you add to the x value? Yes. Uh huh. You got it. So. Uh -huh. So instead of so you would x it would be x plus one equals r or x plus x plus h equals r cosine theta. But if you wanted to put it in terms of uh uh our theta, then it would be x equals r cosine theta minus h. Uh, in this case, is plus is that, no. It, it is plus h? Okay. Yeah, from zero here to this. Okay, you move oh, okay. the x. Oh, we, oh yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. In that case, yeah, in that case, yeah. Plus h. Yes. So when you move but, from yeah. zero here to h, so you will add h to r cosine data. Okay, so you yeah. add h to that. And then the y here, you're going to add k to this. Okay, yeah, you got idea. Good job, okay. Now the data over here, well, I don't put a restriction here. It can go any, it can go around and around. So, okay. But I can also um, put a, so to finish one round here, uh, we also can put this data here, go from zero to two pi. That will finish one round. Uh, if you don't put this, then it's gonna go around and around. Okay. All right, so we found the, 
pair of parametric equation for a circle with this center HK and radius R, okay? We got it over here. Now let's look at this example here. X equal to this, Y equal to the square of sine of T. Notice that this is the square of the sine T and this is sine T. So Y is, in order to eliminate the derivative T, we can express Y here in terms of X. And what does Y equal to, anyone? X squared. X squared, yes. So Y is equal to square of sine T and sine T is X. So Y is equal to X squared. Now we know that this y equal x squared is a parabola, right? Open up and pass in the origin. However, there's a restriction over here on the x. Because sine t, it goes from negative one to one. So x cannot go out of this range. X cannot go out, out of negative one to one. So now we can draw the graph over here. Okay, so it's going to be only this part of the parabola, y equal x squared. Now, if I make a table over here, uh, so I actually make a table. Now, when t is zero, is this one over here. This is when t equal to zero, you go over here. t equal power two, your, the point is going to be at one, one. So you see that it's moving this way. So move from here to here when t goes from zero to pi over two. But then when t equal to pi, it go back to this point over here. So it actually move back. So you move back over here, from here to move back. And then we go to the opposite side over here to this point. And then later on, it moved back over here. So it's kind of like a pendulum, okay? Move back and forth. So go up and go swing back here and swing back and forth. Swing back and forth infinitely often, okay? So if you want to describe that, then, yeah, because the sine curve is uh, periodic, right? So this point here is going to move back and forth forever along this parabola from this point to this point. Okay, back and forth. Now here come to an interesting part here. Uh, we're gonna talk about the cycle, which is going to be on the on our final, okay, on our final and also on our homework. Okay. Now cycle, okay, what is the cycle over here? Okay. Uh, think, think about this is the wheel of your car. Uh, I actually make the wheel over here and I highlight this, this right here. When the, think about this is the wheel of your car, okay? So think about it, it's start from here. When the car move forward, so pick a point on the wheel, say pick this point on the wheel, okay? Now, when, when the wheel go forward, that point over there is going to, chase out an arch when you finish one round, okay? Okay, you can also go backward this way. Think about this. If you go this way, it's gonna chase out, this point P It's gonna chase out this arch over here. And the circumference of this circle of the wheel is going to be the distance that it travel along the ground over here. So if this, the circumference of this circle is two pi r. So from here to here will be two pi r. Okay, that's two pi r. And, and that point over here is gonna chase out this arch here. And um, if it go another, if this wheel here turn another round, it's gonna chase out another arch over here. Let's look at the video over here. All right, so uh, you can see what happened over here. Now, notice that if you draw the, the wheel over here, okay, let's do that. 
if you draw the wheel over here, so you can see that when the wheel is here in the center of this, in the middle of this arch right here, this, the rate, uh, the diameter of the wheel is actually uh, the y coordinate of this highest point on the arch, okay? So that is going to be 2R. The diameter will be here, that's 2R, okay? Now let's try to find, uh, Cyclops kind of interesting. Actually, Galenoy actually, before he suggests that we're going to build a bridge in this in the shape of a cycloid. Well, which is kind of interesting because think about the wheel on the road is going to chase out a cycloid and then the bridge is going to be in the shape of a cycloid. It's a cycle on a cycloid. So kind of interesting. So now, so cycloid over here, Okay, so you know what's a cycloid, okay? Now let's try to find is parametric equation for cycloid. In, in other words, let's try to find x and y in terms of a third variable, okay? Express x and y in terms of third variable. Now, the third variable that we choose, let's choose this center angle data here as the third variable, okay? This center angle here, okay? Now think about this point over here, P is this point over here, okay? So the car will start from here and now it move to the point P is gonna to move to here, okay? So let's try to express the X and Y coordinate of this point P in terms of data, okay? So any idea? Take a look at this x coordinate over here. Okay, is is this part over here? Let me highlight that. Okay, so that will be the green part right here. This green part right here. Okay, that's the x coordinate of the cycle uh, of this point on the cycle. Okay, so our goal here is try to find try to find an equation. Uh, try to express this x over here, x coordinate in terms of this angle data. Now let's focus on this y triangle here. Looking at this y triangle, this is the opposite side of this y triangle, uh, this angle. This is the adjacent side of this angle data. And the radius here is r. So this purple one here will be r sine data, right? What about this orange one here? This one here will be R times cosine data, okay? And the hypotenuse here will be R, the radius. So if you're looking at this X over here, does it look like it is going to be this? Let's call that A subtracting, subtracting, or assign data? Subtracting this, the purple one. Okay, I'm trying to hide. I'm going to actually do that. Subtracting this purple one over here, right? So, and the purple one here, let's call that B. Okay. So the X coordinate of this point, this one here will be A subtracting B, okay? The B over here is R sine data. You got it, right? The B here is R sine data. What about A? Is it R data for the whole thing or just for the B? It's for uh, the whole thing. The A here is R data. Is yeah. actually I should I should actually highlight this. See this one here. This here, uh, because uh, this is part of the circle. Uh -huh. and the center angle is data and the radius is r, then the art length here will be r times data. So the formula for art length will be radius times the center angle here in radian. So it's r times sine data. However, because the car here is travel um, along the road, so the, the point that the, the, the point is, the distance that this point P move 
it should be the distance along the row. This one over here. Okay, so this art length over here, our data will be the same as the distance that the point traveled. So A here will be our data. So X over here will be equal to our data subtracting our sun data. The green one subtracting the purple one um, or the blue one subtracting the purple one, okay? So R data subtract R sign data is the, is the first one, okay. Okay, okay, what about the sec, oh, the Y coordinate here? Any idea? The Y coordinate here looks like is this R over here, subtracting this orange, right? So that will be big R, okay. So from here to here, that is R. And if you subtract this orange part right here, subtract this orange part right here, the orange part here is R cosine data. So Y will be equal to R minus R cosine data. Now you will think that when P is over here, then you have a triangle like this. And it turned out that, okay, when at home, you can try to think about this P instead of at this, uh, at this position, think about in other position and see if this uh, still hold, okay? So what happened here? So X is R data subtracting R sign data. And the Y will be this R over here, subtracting R cosine data. So this is a pair of parametric equations for the side chord. Uh, of course, you can take out this common factor R, okay? And then you have this, their equivalent, okay, either way. Now, remember the data here could be all real number because the center angle, it can, because the wheel move around forever, right? You can think about move around forever. You can also go backward. Data could be negative also, okay? So data will be all real number. So this is a pair of parametric equation for the side part. Okay. Now, when do we use a uh, parametric equation? So today we talk about a uh, parametric curve uh, with parametric equation. So we know that we use parametric equation to can describe the orbit for planet. Okay. Uh, and also in computer graphic, uh, something called how do you, how do you say this word? Anyone? Can you some someone tell me how do you say this one? Bezier. 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 Oh, be looks Bezier. like it. Bezier. Yeah, That's it's French. a parametric curve and used in computer graphic, okay, and related field. So here's one example of a Bezier curve, okay. A lot of time. There are many, many applications of parametric equation and parametric curve. Okay, it's very, com uh, very useful. Okay, so that's the end of today's lesson. So, bye everyone. I see you guys after.